Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing this fluid force head explosion effect. Now I used to not have anything to promote in these videos but over the last six months I've made four huge courses for Phoenix FD and Typhlo. There are hundreds of people already enrolled. We go over all of these examples that you're seeing right now. Everything from complete beginner setups all the way to advanced effects really learning the software from the bottom up. So if you like my style of teaching, if you've been enjoying the free tutorials that I've been posting, I would really appreciate if you check those out. I know that this isn't for everyone, but for those of you who want to take the next step in your learning and really go deep on these topics, the link for you is in the description, or you can just go to redefinefx.com slash courses. All right, so back in 3ds Max, we can jump right into it by creating a Phoenix FD smoke and fire grid and make sure that you just cover your object. Then we need a fire source and let's create some kind of a source object for the smoke to come out of because basically we're going to emit a bunch of smoke, which is then going to drive the sort of destruction of the head. So just standard cylinder and make a cylinder like this, make it a poly and then select the top polygon as we've done many times before and set this to ID 10, hit E, rotate. Next, let's select the source, add and add the cylinder as our Phoenix FD source and we need to animate the outgoing velocity. So just select auto key, set the outgoing velocity to 5000 is what I did. Then go to frame five and set it to a thousand. And then you can go to frame six and set it to zero. So feel free to play around with these numbers, but this is just what worked for me to get that result. And before we forget, let's just turn off temperature and set the polygon ID to 10. Very important. Then select the Phoenix grid and we need to give it more resolution. So we can do maybe three centimeters for the cell size for now, which gives us about two and a half million cells. Now, the more resolution you give to the smoke sim, the nicer the detail you're going to get in these little strands and particles and everything. So we can raise that later, but just to set it up, we can leave it low and we can set the adaptive grid as enabled by smoke with a threshold of 0.01. .01. So this will just expand the grid if the smoke reaches the border instead of it just getting killed. Under dynamics, we can set the conservation quality to something like 40. So this will just allow the smoke to travel and retain its velocity and all the little details, the swirls and everything in the smoke. Under output, just select a folder where you want to save this to and make sure that you enable velocity. And under preview, you can just disable the particle preview and enable the GPU preview. And with all of this in place, let's run the simulation, see if it's working. All right, so I just ran the simulation for 50 frames and everything is running beautifully. Now, don't forget to right click on your object, go to Phoenix FD properties and make it not a solid object. So it's a solid object by default, which means that the smoke will be just bouncing off of the head, um, but we don't want that. So I just disabled it. So actually let's just right click on the head, go to object properties, make it not renderable and display as box. And then let's create a standard tie flow here. And we need to do a birth. Set the start and end to zero with a total of maybe 10,000 particles to start. And we need to do a position object and pick the head. So let's add a fluid force. Here click on none and select the Phoenix grid. And as you can see, as soon as you do that, the particles are being influenced by the Phoenix FD smoke simulation. So this is the base for our effect. This is basically it. Now we can just control it from here. So you get just a few settings here to control how much influence Phoenix has over the particles. So I think right now Phoenix is a bit too strong. It's kind of exploding a bit too much. I like when it's sort of subtle like this and the head retains its shape. So we can just maybe set the influence to 50% and set the velocity direction influence to 50% also. And I'll just change the mode here from blend to replace, which I found has a lesser effect. So now sort of the head is um, sticking together more and we're getting something that's closer to what I had before. Now the Phoenix smoke is kind of in the way, so you can just go under preview here and disable the GPU preview 
and disable the smoke particles as well. So we don't really need to see it anymore. So I'll just add a shape operator, set the display to geometry. For the shape, we can do 3D sphere, low res, enable the scale, and let's set the scale to something like 10 or 15%, something like this, with a 0% variation I found look nicest. So now the last remaining thing is just to boost the amount of particles to get the detail. Now like I said from my example here I did 1 million particles which sounds like a lot but it still only took about 20 seconds for Typhlo to simulate. So let's just try something like 500,000 and I'm gonna let it update. Alright so this is what it looks like with half a million particles. Basically, you're going to start seeing a lot more detail in all of the fluid force where the smoke was and everything. So I think that this is completely passable. Uh, you can keep raising this number, but I'm just going to leave it at 500,000. So I'll just give it this um, pinkish skin material that I had before. And I'll just do unhide by name. And I have three V-Ray lights that I've already prepared. And of course, don't forget that you need to add a mesh operator in order for you to be able to render this. So with all of this in place, I can just put my camera here. So this is what my renderer looks like. Now, don't forget, everything I've taught you in previous tutorials still applies. So you can still go back under Retimer and enable Simulation Retimer. And it's kind of fast. Uh, you know, it only takes about two seconds. But in my example, it's like six seconds because I retimed it and made it, you know, slower. So you can just say, you know, by frame, and go to frame 0, hit auto key, and then go to frame maybe 150 and set this to frame 50, right? So you're stretching it um, three times. It's basically going to be three times slower. So it takes 150 frames for this to happen instead of 50 frames. So it kind of looks slow-mo. You can just animate the camera basically to go around or anything that you, that you find cool, right? So I'll just go to frame 150, make a key here and this would be my effect. So you can just render it out. If you're not sure about rendering settings, I've covered that in previous tutorials, and this is what you're gonna get. So what I did in After Effects, you can just add some curves for contrast. I added some hue and saturation to boost the red, and then I just added some little gradient background, and that is it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because I'll be uploading more. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.